Okay, but like I said, like the OTR essential is pointing out, and like I said, let's just say this represents the Divas title, because I don't have no copy of it yet. But your Divas champion doesn't even have a title entrance, I mean, have an entrance play, and she ends up jobbing to one of the Bellas, if not both Bellas, thus leading to potentially a match at Extreme Rules, from what they're planning. So, your Divas champion, who primarily I guess you're trying to focus on as being your next Wendy Richter or something, where you're trying to make the face of your division, you're trying to make the face of your division, doesn't even get her entrance played and she ends up jobbing. Basically, in her first match on Raw in like a couple of weeks, to the Bellas. Again, unless, like I said, you're on another show, even if you're the Divas champion, you're not the primary focus, but then you would think, okay, he's your champion, he's finally who you want as your champion, he's got the belt for the 11th time, but yet, even, he, even though it wasn't a match, he ends up getting shit baked. The shit, bleh, the shit beat out of him. He ends up getting the shit. Basically, he ends up getting a little bit of focus, if you will. And that's John Cena. And he's your champion. And yet you end the show second week in a row with him beaten down. And why? So you can give the shield momentum going into this Monday night, possibly. So you can show that, what, so you can show that Ryback's a full-fledged heel now? Possibly. But still, you would, you would think, okay, you want to show John Cena is just as strong as Ryback, right? You want to show that he's just as strong as Ryback, he's just as powerful, so let him beat down on the shield. Let, him, let the shield attack him. Let him beat them down, chase them out of the ring, and show Ryback, hey, look, I can beat these guys on my own. So, instead of doing that, you make him a victim. You, make, you basically leave him late. And what does that do? And thus, uh, the quote, Metal D, that's five champions, match, mostly matches, and one non-match, that you have jobbing out and basically showcasing the fact that you do not care for your champions, more specifically your world, your WWE champions. So what does that tell you about the WWE? Does being champion equal jobber? Or in John Cena's case, equal getting beat down? <clears throat> or does it just showcase they don't give a damn or does it showcase they don't give a damn about the titles? I mean, I understand that if anybody here in the IWC and the YWC was running Monday Night Raw, was running the WWE, they would say, all right, we're going to have extreme rules, we're going to have all the titles on the line, and we're going to have a lot of storylines and feuds building up to those championship matches so they can have meaning. And you know what? I completely understand that and agree with that momentum. But again, you got to look at nowadays, you've got to look at today's situation. You gotta take a look at today's situation with the WWE. You see, you can want that all you want. You can want that all you want. You can say, I want this, I want that. You can say that. You can say, I want this and I want that all you want. You can say that all you want. You can say, I want this, I want that. You can say that all you want. But the fact of the matter is, unless, you're, unless you understand the business sense of the WWE, you're not going to get it. You see, you see, some people might say that Antonio was in 
hot was or is in hot water with the WWE. And that's fine. That's understandable. Being in hot water, fine. You end up losing your belt, fine. But could it mean something more? Sometimes losing a belt means you're going to either be moved up the card or they got something else planned for you. And with the fact that Antonio's former partner, Chris Hero, Cassius Ono, could be called up very soon, makes you think. It makes you think, perhaps, they have plans to reunite the kings of wrestling in the WWE. Think about that. They know, think about that. You think the WWE is not seeing what the kings of wrestling can do in Ring of Honor and if done on the independent scene? Do you not think they know what they can do? They know. They know how good they are. And if Triple H's goal is to revitalize the tag team division, who's he not to pass up on that opportunity? So perhaps Antonio losing the belt could mean bigger things. Either a chance at a, either possibly a shot at contending for this or for the world title, or a shot at being reunited with his partner. Who knows? The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, sometimes it's a good sign and sometimes it's not. But the thing is, why would the WWE job out a lot of the champions? Why would they job them out? Well, again, it's very, very simple. In my opinion, it's very, very simple. You see, from a storyline perspective, from a storyline perspective, you want the champion, let's say if you're a babyface, right, you're a babyface champion, like say, like say Caitlyn's supposed to be. You have the Bellas do their twin magic on Caitlyn, it makes her look vulnerable. It makes her look like she cannot win. Okay? It makes it look like she cannot win, all right? So there you go. Makes it, again, look like she cannot win. And then, as far as, let's say, Barrett jobbing out and Ziggler jobbing out, it makes it look like, even though Ziggler jobbed out to a fellow heel and Barrett jobbed out to a babyface in our truth, it makes it look like they're vulnerable. It makes them makes them too look like they're vulnerable. And if you and if they're a heel, it makes it look like the babyface can beat them. You know, you know, twice in a row. Makes it look like the babyface can beat them twice in a row. So basically, it may, okay, it's like you have our truth beating Barrett. So it gives you the impression our tooth if the title's on the line, our tooth can beat him and become a continental champion. Alright. You know, that's cool. Same with Swagger beating Ziggler. You think, okay, Swagger beat Ziggler, looks makes it look like he could have a shot of walking out of extreme rules with the world heavyweight title. You see, it gives you that impression, and either two things happen. Either A they actually do it and let the person win the belt in the rematch or they have the champion retain so that the non-title win made it look like they're beatable but in the end when it matters they win. I know, kind of confusing there, right? But the point is, in my opinion, that's how WWE logic is. So. But again, the question is, being champion equals being a jobber? Let me know what you guys think on that. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it means being a jobber? And do you think it just means being a jobber when you're um, for certain matches, opponents and all that, but then in the end, if you have to defend the title, you retain kind of deal? What do you think? 
Let me know what you guys think below about this whole situation. Comment below, size was in two parts, and I'll talk to you all later.